Okay, let's talk about angular acceleration um, leading to rotational motion and angular momentum. So we'll talk about kinematics of rotational stuff. So angular acceleration. So there's a new term, angular velocity. Angular velocity is change in distance over change in time. Uh, velocity is, so you have a, a regular translational velocity, which is just r times omega. So omega is v over r, the radius of curvature. So if you know how fast you're moving v here, you can figure out how long it takes you to go all the way around. And that's the relationship between omega and v. Okay, um, alpha is this change in velocity over change in time. So let's say you've got, you can do your regular kinematics equations. Um, uh, if it starts, so this 250 revolutions per minute. So we've got to go 250 RPMs, revolutions per minute. you got to convert that. There's two pi radians in a revolution in one minute and 60 seconds. So you got to convert from revolutions per minute to radians per second um, and do your conversion there. So study that. And then uh, you can calculate your alpha from there. Um, your centripetal acceleration is always directed towards the center. That's different from this tangential acceleration, which might cause something to actually accelerate. So your tangential acceleration is your regular velocity over regular time, um, or translational velocity over, tra over time. Uh, so you can get what that is. Okay, um, this is your rotational theta and omega and alpha, and then that corresponds to x, v, and a. And the relationship here is theta is x over r, that's arc length. Um, omega is v over r, and alpha is a uh, tangential divided by r. Okay, so all of your things rely on your um, uh, uh, the size of your orbit. Okay, so the kinematics you have the same equations v equals v zero plus a t, except now it becomes omega equals omega zero plus alpha t. So um, there's your rotational and translational equations. The relationships between them, they're the same kinematics equations you know and love. <laughs> and in rotational form, you just replace all your uh, Greek letters, all your Latin characters with Greek letters. Okay, um, so then there's some examples here you should work through uh, that are pretty straightforward. Um, you've got a heating up a piece of pie in the microwave. Um, and your dynamics. Okay, so now you apply a force or a torque you apply a force at a distance, you get a torque. And instead of torque, uh, instead of torque being zero for stable equilibrium or statics, now we're going to have our uh, torques adding up to something. And torque in this case can add up to moment of inertia times alpha. And so your um, net torque is I alpha. Okay. So when you apply a force to something, it causes it to accelerate. This force is the mass times the acceleration, which is R alpha. And you get this uh, torque is defined as mR squared alpha for a disk, for example. And that mR squared is what we call the moment of inertia. And it's either mR squared or it could be half mR squared or five thirds mR squared. Depends on the shape of something. If it's just a regular mass orbiting, it's just mR squared times um, alpha. Okay. Um, and these are moments of inertia for other odd objects or a hoop. And it has to be rotating like that, or it has to be rotating like this, or this has to be rotating around like that. So not only does the shape of the mass matter, um, so does the uh, so does the um, way it's rotating. Okay. So when you do your torques equals i alpha, you have to look up the shape that's in your problem and write down the i. For example, this one's ml squared over three. This one's two thirds mr squared. So you have to know the mass of the object, but also its radius and some other things about it to get the calculate what your acceleration will be if you apply a torque to it. So yeah, what am I saying? I'm saying if you apply a torque boom to this thing, then the acceleration it undergoes is I, this ml squared times alpha. So if I know what my torque is, if it's 10 newtons times L, that's going to equal ml squared over three times alpha, and I can solve for what alpha is, how quickly this will accelerate. Or if I sp if I spin the ball, if I use my hand and swat the ball, um, I could calculate and so on. Okay. Um, so your rotational kinetic energy work and energy revisited. So the same thing here: work is I alpha times distance or force times distance, um, uh, moment of inertia times alpha, torque times distance. Okay, and again, you've got your 
kinetic energy, uh, which is one half i omega squared. We replace m and v with i and omega, and we get one half i omega squared. If something's rotating and translating, then it becomes one half m v squared plus one half i omega squared, and that's what uh, this is trying to um, show you here. So if something is rotating and sliding, then you're going to have one half m v squared plus one half i omega squared. Okay, and uh, this is the key thing you have to take away here because of the re relationship between omega and v and r. You can actually substitute one half m v squared, and you can convert one half i omega squared into replace i with whatever the moment of inertia is. For example, one half m r squared, and then omega into v over r, and then you can get a form of the energy that's only in v and only in r, and you don't have to worry about any of the other variables. Okay, that's pretty cool. Um, and then angular momentum, regular momentum p equals m v, but the rotational analog for momentum is i. Uh, for mass, and then v is omega. So angular momentum is i omega instead of mv. Um, and if something is rotating, it has momentum, and it depends on its i and its velocity. Okay, and then the change in momentum over time, same thing, this impulse uh, thing that we we're talking about with regular stuff. Um, and then again, you're, you apply a torque to something. Um, now, something that's really cool is that your uh, um, angular momentum is conserved before and after something. So you've got this skater who has a current angular momentum of i omega. If she changes her mass distribution, she changes her i, that's got to change her omega because i omega here has to equal i omega here, but it's a different i, so omega has to change in order to give. Uh, okay, so uh, that's that. And then, um, yeah, we got some planets there. And then two-body collisions, we're not going to spend a whole lot of time on, not two-body collisions, but um, collisions of extended bodies in two dimensions, so we're not going to spend a whole lot of time on that, but um, uh, it's the same as the other thing where you just focus on your initial and final components uh, of X and Y. And then you get your gyroscope, this is kind of a weird thing, so your right-hand rule says if your thing rotates this, you curl your fingers that way, and then your thumb points in the direction of angular momentum, so it turns out angular momentum is a vector and it points um, away from your uh, the rotation plane. So if there's your right-hand rule. If something's rotating around that way, then your torque is up. Uh, your angular momentum is up. So that's an interesting thing. That's the, how gyroscopes work, which gyroscopes are magic, so they're very strange. Okay, so your angular acceleration, your kinematics, all the same in rotational stuff. You just use radians instead of meters. And then um, your dynamics is when you have a torque that's unbalanced and you have torque equals I alpha, and you can solve for that. And then your kinetic energy, um, you can have I omega, one half I omega squared if it's rotating, and one half mv squared if it's translating, and then you could find the ratio between the two. Um, so it's important to have uh, that thing. And then, okay, so then angular momentum can be conserved, it's just I omega, and you can have an initial I omega and a final I omega. If your I changes, your omega has to change um, and that's how you can do those problems. Okay, and then you remember your inertia, the moment of inertia of an object you have to look up for your specific case. Not just the shape, but is it rotating about the main axis or an off axis or something else. Okay, bye.